All right, so after you get your background put in place and your other figures kind of inserted to kind of emphasize the size of your sculpture, we are now going to start beginning the shading process. We are going to be using a side diagonal hatch. You're going to have your lines close together, and you see how I'm holding my pencil on the end here, not on the very tip. This forces me to go a little bit lighter. I have this video in a fast forward speed because we're literally going to do a side diagonal hatch all the way down the face of our structure. We're just going to keep doing this until we have our entire shape here filled with one layer of lead. So pause this video, do your side diagonal hatch all the way down from top to bottom, and then play when you're ready to move on to the next step. Once you are done doing your entire facial structure, including the bust, which is the neck, head, and shoulders of your Moai sculpture for your Easter Island project, you are then going to be starting to work on the hills as well. Let's continue that side diagonal hatch all the way across our hills to kind of give our hills kind of a sense of uh, value in comparison to the bright, bright sky. So work on one side of your paper and move all the way other to your other side, skipping over your Maui sculpture. Next, we're going to help our Maui sculpture kind of pop out in a way from your background. So let's add a secondary layer of shade to the sculpture itself so that way it separates from your hillside. As I was doing this project, I didn't really notice that I did not have my camera showing the picture as well. And for that, I apologize. But for your next part of your project is to kind of shade in the facial features. So feel free to follow along with me as I'm doing this and pause when necessary. That way you can use my drawing as a visual. But right here, we have at least two, if not three layers Actually, it would be three layers of shade. You're adding your third layer of shade to the underside of your chin, to your cheekbone area, and to the underside of your nose. And also for the kind of triangular part where the armpit and the pectoral muscles and chest come together. So here you're going to want to do a medium pressure to writing kind of pressure. You want your pencil to be pushed a little bit harder into the paper. Uh, for the shadow of your Mawai, you might want to add one additional layer behind your statue's body to kind of give it like a three-dimensional shadow. Uh, this is optional. It all depends on what day or what time of day your sculpture is being displayed. But for me, I decided it would be really cool to have a shadow. So allow yourself medium to writing or hard pressure for that shadowy area. I myself was not a fan of how all of the hillsides kind of came together as one solid whole. So I added an additional secondary layer to my first tail to help it stand out and become more uh, prominent or easily seen by the viewer. We call this foreground, midground, background. So whatever's in the foreground or the front of your picture, it's gonna be a little more detailed. You're gonna have a little more darker shadows. Things are gonna look a little more crisper. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I'm adding that additional shade to uh, hill number one to help separate it from my uh, midground, my, my secondary hills that are there going towards the back of my picture. I also added an additional layer of shade on the edge of my hill to help kind of crispen it up and make it look more like a three-dimensional figure. 
uh, all the while, while I'm adding these layers here, I'm using a light pressure, feather light, like we did with layer one, because I don't want to go too dark too quickly and have my hill compete with my figurehead. We still have some darker parts in the face that we need to establish. So let's go in with a feather light touch and add not a third layer, but a fourth layer along the bridge or the edge of the nose to help that nose pop out and along the top left hand corner of your sculpture's forehead. This is kind of going to give it the rounded effect. We're also going to help create kind of like a crevice or kind of like an indent in the face for the eyes. And we're going to add an additional layer here just between the chin and where the shadow of the, the casting shadow of the neck begins. This is going to help those areas pop and look more three dimensional. Feel free to clean up your line using an eraser. Right here I went a little bit overboard so I am touching up my line and I am going to fine tune that area once again kind of using my pencil. I don't like how different or how extreme of a change I have in between my shapes and shadow here. So I added an additional feather light touch to my hillside and to my face. There we go. Yep, you're gonna wanna kind of do like a medium value for this eye over here too. Maybe even lighten it up a little bit. I think I put it a little bit too dark. Now it's time to do the little squinty eye trick and see if your shadows gradually shift from dark to medium to light. You can do that by kind of stepping back from your artwork, kind of looking at it, squinting your eyes a bit and seeing if you see that gradual shift. Now, if you don't, if you feel like an area is a little too light and it needs to be darkened, like this edge here, like along the shoulders, and along the cheekbone or the jawbone, then add an additional layer, but just do it lightly and feather it in there until you're satisfied with the way the shadows shift from light to dark. So this is like the three, two, one layering technique that I usually teach in my pen and ink course. Um, but it is a great way to gradually build your shadow and create a realistic piece of work at home. For more tips and tricks, please don't forget to follow us uh, via the classroom or via our YouTube channel.